In this video, we are talking all about George's D23 Ultimate Fan Event Experience. Okay, this is a doozy, y'all. This is a doozy. We're going to talk about it. We're also going to dive into some what other content creators, what they were experiencing, trying to get tickets for this event. We have a lot to discuss today. We got the Italiana. We got Mr. Michael Ebba in the house on this episode of OG 55. Welcome aboard, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of OG55. We are talking all about the D23 Ultimate Fan Event. Uh, and George has experienced trying to get all of us tickets. Yeah, George, George is ready to go. George is ready to go. He's rearing to go. George, if you can let everybody home know where they can find you on social media, sir. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And, of course, you'll find me here on my home base in Orange Grove, 55 with Citrus Corner, with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There it is. Mr. Sticky Icky is in the house, and we got the one, the only – the OG 55's friendly neighborhood Spider Man, Mr. Michael Ebba, or as we call him, Webba. Welcome back, <laughs> Michael. OG, George, thank you so much for having me uh, back on today's show. It's going to be a doozy with uh, George here. I can't, I can't wait. I'm excited. <laughs> but you can find me on Instagram, uh, Michael Ebba. You can find me on Twitter, at Michael Ebba1991. And then you can also find me here on OG 55, where I swing in and from Save the City, I come in and talk nerd with these guys. Yeah, 100%, 100%. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the D23 Ultimate Fan Event. It was, hey, look, you know, George, he had his laptop, he busted it open. Easy peasy getting those tickets, right, George? <laughs> no no problem at all right brother is that kind no, of went no problem i mean that the whole hype for this thing was you know we're we're expanding capacity you know we're going to make it more easier for people to get to and fro the you know from the anaheim convention center and the honda center you know it's going to be and th this is actually coming from d23 like high-end like reps are saying this you know it's like oh it's going to be smooth sailing well <laughs> guess what News flash, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, well, let's dive into it. Let's dive into it, George. So kind of walk us through the process. So what we'll do basically, audience, is what we're going to do is we're going to talk about George's experience. And then after we kind of go through his experience and break it down and talk about it, we're actually going to go through some other content creators like Adam the Woo, Tim Tracker, Mr. Daps, about their experiences also with, with the D23 situation. So we'll hear George's first, and then we'll dip into that. But George, kind of walk us through the, the your uh, your day. Yes. <laughs> <So to speak. laughs> Absolutely. And before I do, I just have to say um, this, this recording will kind of solidify the fact that we are not what you are t titling as quote unquote pixie dusters. We see it as it is and we tell the truth like it is for better, for worse. You know, it's like a marriage, you know? So it's like how we critique universal. That's how we critique Disney. So, and it's like, now does that change the fact of how I feel about Disney? Uh, part of the, the club, so to speak, as being not only a gold member, but a charter member that I actually started opening day, March 10th, 2009. Uh, yeah, so, so kind of going off of that. So on March 26th was the first day for the pre-sales for gold member D23 members only. Um, day two was for, uh, D23 members and or, uh, Visa, um, Disney Visa Chase card holders. And then the third day, March 28th, was for just everybody, including just the D23 general members, but you have to be a D23 member to purchase tickets for this event, um, which is completely fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. So March 26th, obviously, as I said, I'm a, I'm a gold member. I'm, I'm like amping it up. And as everyone who has been following us on social media and on the channel, you know, we've been talking about, you know, OG 55 crew is going to be on location. We're going to D23. Obviously, I thought we had this in the bag because, as I said, for the 15 years I've been a member, 
no issues whatsoever. And the fact that they were adding capacity says, you know what, that even heightens our chances even more on getting what we want. And honestly, what we wanted wasn't really that big of a, of a feat. You know, we wanted honestly the nosebleed seats in right. Honda Center. We didn't, we couldn't give two shits of really where we were sitting. Uh, yeah. We, hey, you know what? It, well, for D23, I'll take the nosebleeds. But if it was like a La Seraphim concert, I need front row, George. You know what I'm saying? Uh, of course. Yeah. For this, uh, come on. Nosebleeds are cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, but, for for uh which um the video later on that we'll get into with daps magic because he was at a media event uh by the way shout out to daps magic uh love the content bro yeah um, but just, just make sure you give him your hat his hat back though when you're done of course yeah yeah <laughs> I, I, I had to put this on rental <laughs> um but they actually showcased of how the honda center would look Right. with this event and actually any seat that you had the way that it was designed was a good seat so no matter where you were sitting they kind of did like a 3d rendering um at the media event so anyway i digress um so the day was like i was prepping i was getting everything ready um i was kind of uh giving uh everyone the fellas the play-by-play -play of what's going to go on i already had everything up as far as being on the website ready to get into the queue. So I had the page up and it was doing the, the, the time clock ticking down and uh, I had my phone ready. And what happened was when it, when it went down to zero, I thought it was going to be a button was going to show up sort of like how the, the Disney after hour events come. So it's sort of like right. a, you know, whoever presses the button first or, uh, or even like how with the fast pass, uh, not fast pass, but the um, attraction virtual cues, like for uh, Tron or Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, you press the button and it's like a first come first, first come first serve basis where whoever presses it the fastest, even though a lot of people's doing it at the same time, that's where it puts you in the line. Well, for this, no button needed to be pressed. D23 did that for you. Thought that was a good idea? Absolutely not, because apparently what they do is it's not a first come first serve basis. They set you up as like a raffle system where they just give you a random number and whatever number you're, you're at, that's what you get. And I actually had the privilege of getting number 1,706. And I thought that was a bad place because I didn't know how many people were they were letting on at a time. I'm thinking, oh, that doesn't look like a good number. Well, I jump on social media and I see people are saying, oh, I'm number 28,000. I'm number 46,000. I'm like, oh, geez. And I'm complaining about 1,700. I think I'm in a pretty good spot. Yeah. And so I thought, okay, that's perfectly fine. 45 minutes in the virtual queue, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That was fine. Hold on, hold on, George. When you, when you sit, when you when you go that far, I gotta drop it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, <laughs> you're good. Uh, Forty five minutes, and they redirect me to the website. Well, this is when the shit really starts hitting the fan. So the website that they send me to, they have a list of the different types of tickets you can get. You can get a, a three-day ultimate fan pass, a three-day preferred ultimate fan pass, the single days, you know, all that jazz. Well, here it showed the picture of the ticket type, and I'm tapping it, and it's not going. And I thought, why isn't it going? It's not directing me into nothing. So I went up to the top. I refreshed the page. The, the page flickered and came on, and then it said select. And I thought, okay, minor little hiccup, fine. I click the select button for the uh, the three day ultimate fan pass because the preferred fan pass is basically the lower seats where they're much more money. As I said, we wanted the cheapest of the cheap. We just wanted the nosebleeder seats. Watch it, enjoy it, be there together as a group. You know, all fun and good times. So I, I did the the three day ultimate fan pass. It took me to another page, which brought me and oh, it gave you the option best available or choose your own seats well i did choose your own seats because i knew in my mind if i was to hit right. best available disney's going to redirect me to the two thousand dollar seats saying hey these right. are the best seats available it's like no i don't want those <laughs> so i clicked choose my own seats and it brought me to the page with the uh the map of the honda center and everything was lit up purple pink blue teal 
you could basically, I had the pick of, of a lifetime. I could have picked anything I wanted to. So I zoom in. I'm like, okay, go to the back. I'm pressing on the seats and literally it would not light up, would not light up. I'm tapping them. It would not go. So basically it was like walking into a steakhouse, smelling all that wonderful steak and then being told you got to turn around and leave the, leave the room. You can't, you can't eat anything. We're going to let you smell the steak, but you're not going to eat any of the steak. Exactly. It's like, you're trying to grab it and it's like, nope, they're pulling it away, pulling it away. And then on top of that, I'm looking and this had to be in real time. I'm watching every seat get picked. It's like all the colors just started turning gray. And I'm thinking, Oh my gosh, like how many people do they have in here at a time? And it's like, it was literally like the hunger games. It was like, everyone was fighting for the same seat. So as I guess everyone was clicking on the same seat at the same time, the computer went into overload and started crashing. But then even as I was picking seats, cause I had to pick five, other people were choosing out of that road because it was taking so long for it to go through. And I'm like, Oh, I can't, I can't take this row now. So I had to try to take them out of the cart that took forever. And it was like, nothing was going right. Then it kicked me out. It brought me to the queue line again, which the queue line went all the way back up. I had to be redirected, caught back into, uh, the map. And it was literally people. And then there were like no seats left. And I'm thinking, what what the hell happened? So apparently, and um, Tim Tracker and um, his buddy, which we'll get into the video in a little bit, they do uh, they were doing the podcast, and also too a couple other people were saying. Now this was not officially stated by Disney, and honestly, I don't even think Disney would ever come out to tell the truth on this. I think they would be, this would be just a cover up in my opinion, but this, well, this is kind of like, this is like inside baseball. Basically. This is inside. Yeah. Cause this is coming from a lot of different sources that apparently someone who is doing the operations of all this ticketing sales for D 23 had the date wrong on the tickets. They had August 7th for either the sale date or the start date and they basically had to kind of shut the system down and try to mark everybody off to know where their place was. Well, you can't do that when people are already in there trying to choose their seats. Uh -huh. I happened to be the unlucky one while all this was transpiring. I was in there trying to get the seats. That's why it kept on kicking me out and why it wouldn't let me select the seats because Disney's now trying to scramble by reconfiguring the dates that were that were put on their tickets. So you mean to tell me they had all this time, they waited one week to the day of selling these damn things to give us the ticket prices. You mean to tell me that while all this is going on, they couldn't look and recheck the fact of that the date is incorrect? You have to actually see it when you're actually selling these things. And that's it, and that's malpractice. That really is. There's no excuse for that. And what happens is it screws over it screwed over not just us, you know, but it screwed over a lot of people. But Disney doesn't care though, because they're gonna fill those seats, whether it's George and OG and Michael, or whether it's Betty, Susie, and and Yunjin, they, they don't care who's sitting in those seats. You know what I'm saying? You had to, didn't you? I, I had to throw her in there. You know what I'm saying? I had to throw her in there. But, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? So so they don't care that we didn't get seats because those seats will get full right away anyway. Mm -hmm. And that's the shitty thing because it's like you had those seats. You were on the site ready to go, mm -hmm. and you were prevented from doing it because of their uh, mistake. Yes, that is what ultimately completely – pissed me off to no end yes i am i get hard on myself when i make a mistake or what have you but i have a bigger issue when somebody else's ignorance and mistakes cost me of what i'm trying to do and i'm trying to give disney money i'm trying to hand it to them and they don't want it but again as og said they don't care if it's my money. They don't care if it's his money. They don't care if it's Michael's money. As long as it's somebody's money, they don't give a right. shit whose ass is in the seat or not. Right, because you know? those, those seats ended up filling up, you know. And and we'll get to this, too. I don't want to get too conspiratorial, but that is a little weird how quickly – we talked about this all over the phone, Jordan mm – -hmm. how quickly these, these seats filled up comparative to – on um, the last yeah. expo and we'll talk about that and i'm not typically yes. into conspiracy theories i'm not either but damn this seems kind of fishy 
Uh, pretty fishy, bro. Pretty fishy. Fishier than uh, the, the the Finding Nemo submarine void. But continue, sir. Yes. <laughs> so as <laughs> so as these gentlemen know, because I spoke to both of them that day, I was completely mortified of what happened. Because literally, I watched every single seat in front of my my naked eyes. Literally, just. Kind of literally, it blipped. That's basically what it was. It was like Thanos like clicked his finger, and then boom, all the seats were gone. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, all our plans, everything, within five minutes, it got completely crushed, literally. And I'm thinking, oh my god, what do I tell everybody? Like literally, they're waiting to hear back from me, and it's like, what the hell do I tell them? Like I don't even know what to do. Like how do I? All the seats that were left were. The seven hundred between the seven hundred and the two thousand dollar seats, and I'm thinking, we can't do that. <laughs> it's like, and I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't do it. And I'm thinking, it's done. It's it's. And honestly, I'm an Italian. I'm a hothead. I'll admit it. But I don't think I've ever lost my temper. And I know it sounds petty. And I'm going to be real with everyone on here because I'm I'm a, I'm a real motherfucker. You know, that's just how I am. And sorry, but I am. It's, I, I, I rarely, I get frustrated. I get loud. I talk with my hands. I'm Italian, you know, it's, but I don't think I've ever been in such an angry rage, especially at Disney before in the sense, not like in violent rage in rage of just anger, disappointment, and frustration that literally Disney at that point, I'm sorry, in that moment, they failed me. The system of, of of Disney failed me because they completely dropped the ball on having everything. Is is things gonna happen? Yes, nothing's perfect. Life isn't perfect, life isn't fair. But you have to at least have a common ground that if you have this system that you've been using for over God knows how long, and you know it doesn't work because you go through this shit every single year. I don't know why Disney even puts themselves through this, why they cannot fix the freaking technology that they use, they have the money for it why to use go, these systems. Why don't they do like a third party or something? Like let, let like a third party handle this for them. I don't know why they don't do that. I mean, I, obviously I, I guess because they would have to give that third party a chunk of, you know, the, the ticketing and all that, I'm sure. But it's like, I think that would be the better option. Because clearly, like you said, George, clearly they have an issue. It's not like this is the only D23 with, with logistical issues. This seems to be an ongoing thing with this expo. Maybe it's not this thing, this exact problem, but it's another problem. Um, you talked about, I think it was two years ago when people were were, were cutting in line or something and there was damn near a riot. Uh, at two, the expo. 2000, 2011. At 2011, there were people that waited in the overnight queue for the animation panel and no one was monitoring anything. People here were just walking through the door and bypassing the line and going right into picking seats. While the people who stayed in the queue overnight, they got rejected. Wow. There was, I swear to God, I thought someone was going to lose a head that day. Because, I mean, when the officials came down, the D23 officials, with security, they had to. These people literally had the officials up to the wall their backs to the wall that's how close they were to them and it's like oh you're gonna do something you're gonna give us something and this guy he was professional he was calm but damn i i guarantee you he probably pissed his boxer shorts that day because he was like all eyes were on him he's like i'm working with everyone we're gonna get this fixed luckily they did make it up to them they were able to to their choice they could have either gone to the live action panel or the parks panel for the following days guaranteed preferred seating so luckily that mess was taken care of but there almost was bloodshed that day oh, i kid you God. not now michael i want to let you chime in on this and, and now you michael you've never been to an expo before now i'm sure what we're talking about with all this i'm sure you're really uh, enthusiastic to do that <laughs> next time it, it just seems like so much fun, you know the, the, the process right but you never you never been before but like wh- what are your thoughts on what george is saying like his experience and everything like what's your take on all this brother I'll tell you, man, there is 
<laughs> there are so many because I here's the, I've never been to the expos right or to the events, but you know I've I've heard about them. I've heard some of the problems that like you guys have just mentioned right now about the story. Um, so there's a lot of problems with this year's right. One being the George, the one that George just told us about. Uh, the first issue is why did they release prices like literally seven days prior to when they're supposed to like launch, right? I, I don't get that because now you know because people need to save up for money, right? right. You know, like not not everybody has three, four, or five hundred dollars to just spend on a whim. You know, people need to save for stuff. So I didn't like that they waited at such a close deadline to then you know announce how how much these uh, packages or prices were going to be. Second of all, I really think, and this is going back to that article that I know you guys did a video on this a while ago about the it said like was it Walt Disney World was a ripoff? No, 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 no. This is a ripoff. If you're gonna pay over, I'm sorry. If you're paying seven hundred plus dollars or more, that it's to me, to me, that's a ripoff. That is not worth it at all. Like, so I know people want to go and spend their money, you do what you do, but in my opinion, that is a way bigger ripoff. And and honestly, as I said, I'm a gold member, but on top of that, I'm also a charter member. I started with D23 from the very first day of its conception back in 2009. I've been a loyalist to them for now the 15th anniversary, and. We are supposed to get pre-sale dates, which was the March 26th one, dedicated for our loyal fans of the gold members. So what you're saying, George, is that you were promised special access, is what you're saying. Brother. Basically, and I didn't get that shit. So, <laughs> so, so, and it's like, and I pay my yearly membership subscription, and it's like, what did it give me? I'm, I'm giving D23 my money, but I'm not getting anything back in return. And again, am I asking for, as I said, everything on a, on a silver platter? No, but I expect at least something in return to the fact of that I should have at least had a chance of even having these tickets, which I'm going to get into the second part real quick because I do want to get into these Disney kind of conspiracies because for yeah. me, this <clears throat> year, it just doesn't add up to me at all. And actually, part of that was what Mike was saying about the, the date released for the pricing. But anyway, so day two, so after the fact... OG, Mike, uh, our good friend Mindy, they had to literally like calm me down, reassure me, you know, say everything's cool, you know, we're, we're good, it's everything. And I talked to Mindy and she said, let's try it again tomorrow. I said, I'll do it for you, but I'm completely checked out. Like I was in that moment, I was ready to cancel my membership. I was ready to just like, I was like done, not with Disney, but just the D23 portion of it, I was, I was like done. And I said, I'll do it for you. And George ripped the Bob Iger poster off his wall. It was serious, bro. I did. I did. <laughs> signed, signed copy and everything. <laughs> well, 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 just just real quick, I also want to say, too, um, I also bought a gold membership, duo gold membership, specifically mm -hmm. for this as well. I bought it um, just last month in March for it. Um, and I mean, here's the thing. I'm not really going to do anything with it do anything with it i'm just going to keep it whatever i spent the money um you know I, i'm just looking forward to the box that they send you and then i'll just probably just can't like let it can't like drop off after the year because i mean um, what else are you going to do with it really like, just make sure you might have to manually cancel it because i know i don't know if it, you have to have it on automatic renewal or it might just do it on its own whatever the original payment was they might automatically do it so just double check that in your uh your settings account and Eba, what I would also suggest is now you have the membership, you know, you might as well, like within that year, you might as well make some use of it. Yeah. Keep an eye out and I'll send it to you if I see it. But they offer studio tours, like D23 mm -hmm. uh, studio, uh, studio tours in Burbank. Okay. And uh, I don't know if you've been to the studio before, but it is really, as a Disney fan, bro, it's bucket list stuff. It's amazing. Okay. So if you have that membership, if you have lemons, make some lemonade, basically, uh, look out for that because that would be something worth it. I think for me, I actually did that one year. I actually got mm -hmm. the, the the gold membership just so I can do the studio tour. Like literally, that's the only reason I got it. Okay. And then it, for me, it was worth it. Like totally worth the price of, of what I paid for it. So keep an eye out for that. You know, if, if you have it, you might as well make use of it basically. You know what I'm saying? So okay. we'll see, you know. Go ahead, Drew. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. I've done the studio tours many times along with everything else with the membership. And as I said, no issues. Perfectly fine, you know, didn't really think nothing of it, but I guess there's a first time for everything, but I digress. So day two, I told Mindy, 
you know, now the Visa card holders are coming into play. And I told her, I said, what I saw, there wasn't no seats left. She said, there has to be some seats that are left that they're kind of holding to release. I said, I don't know. I said, I'll do it for you to give you your satisfaction. But I said, I'm completely checked out of this. I said, I have zero interest in doing this, but I also have zero faith that we're going to get anything of this compared to what I just went through. I was drained. OG and I were supposed to have uh, something going on. And I, I can't remember like what it was, but it was like, I was just done. Like I was checked out of everything. I it was so like emotional, emotionally draining, almost to the fact where it was making me sick. Yeah. Like George, George had to like basically take, take the day off basically. Cause basically. it was so, you know, yeah, I was like, and again, I usually don't let things get to me like that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty crucial when it comes to that, but this just hit me in a certain way that I've never expected. I mean, as I said, it hit my nerves badly. I was nauseous. I had a migraine from hell. It was like all the whole nine yards. So I was like, I'm not going to put myself through that again. My health isn't worth it. So I, I told Mindy is like, I'll do this, but I'm going to be on neutral. I kid you not folks. We had <laughs> me, Mindy, her husband, her daughter, her son, my mom, and her boyfriend using 12 pieces of equipment <laughs> between the, phones. The devices, right? Devices, yes. Phones, laptops, and iPads. All synchronized going off at the same time. And we still couldn't get anything because when we finally got in there... There was nothing left. And I even told Mindy, I said, there, there's nothing available. And she tried clicking. She's like, I see your point. I'm trying to click the seats, but they're not going. And it's like, by the time one seat gets into your cart, all the other seats are taken. So now you have to reject that seat and go to another section. So it's like, it can never catch up. Everything was just so slow. Everything crashed. It knocked her out. She had to go back in. And it, it was just, it was just crazy. And literally, I would say five seconds from us getting out of the queue, going into the, uh, where the map is with choosing the seats, the three day ultimate fan pass sold out literally five seconds before we got in. And, and then we find out later on that they were already sold out. It took them how long to make that announcement? So all of us were sitting in a queue for absolutely nothing because there was a person who took the social media. We were number 3,000 something, I believe. And they were number 304, I believe, or 306 or something like that. By the time they got into there to pick their seats, the, the three-day pass was sold out. See, and here's the thing, and we'll get into the conspiracy stuff a little bit right now. They okay, so they added all this capacity. It took I don't know the exact number of days, but it was 180 something 184. 184 days for the last expo to sell out. Okay. This expo, or you know, fan event, as they call it now, um, expanded capacity and it sold out in three days. Now, this is why George and I are a little suspicious of this, because it's like what exactly about this particular expo or fan event is causing that kind of demand? Like there really isn't, you would think there'd be even less demand this year because the last couple conventions Disney has done with the parks have been pretty underwhelming with Josh Diamaro. Let's be honest. There's been a lot of what if and maybe in this kind of stuff. And a lot of fans have been disappointed and they feel, they feel kind of you know disappointed with the whole situation. So now you do this thing, you expand capacity for this expo and it sells out in three days compared to 184 days the last time. I first look, I'm not into the whole crazy conspiracy theory stuff. I don't buy into these notions, but that doesn't feel right. There's something that's weird. I don't know. That's weird to me. It, it really is. And as oh, and before we continue, I have to say it, bro. You said maybe. Oh, I said me. Oh, come on. We got it. We got to give a shout. So maybe. Cause I'm the girl that drives you crazy. But you're killing me alone. Think 
<laughs> What's up, maybe? May, 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 maybe his family here at OG55. When we say maybe, we give a shout out to maybe. Go ahead, George. Absolutely. Yeah. So as you were saying, OG, like it's to me, it, it just it it's it's wrapping around my brain of like all this thinking of why I'm not understanding that you have an expo that only had one venue, which was the Anaheim Convention Center. Right. Where they had these big presentations which are now going to be at the Honda Center, which is going to be the second venue, all wrapped into one building, less capacity than this year. And they even said it, even in the uh, the DAPS Magic uh, uh, media event uh, video, they said they're opening up all the halls of D23 in the Anaheim Convention Center for more capacity. Again, adding the Honda Center for more capacity. How in the world does one go from having less capacity and selling out 184 days later and then adding more capacity but selling out three days, which technically it's three days, but there was only a few seats left because I actually purposely went back into that virtual queue because I was curious to see how many was left. It had to be half of a dozen of seats that were left on day three. There, and that was the day that it was open to ev all D23 members. Wow. They made it sound like, oh, all D23 members welcome. Welcome to what? An empty freaking arena with, with $2,000 seats left, which was only about like six of them. No one had a chance at this. Nobody. It was setting us up to failure. And I'm sorry. And the reason why I brought up that that video because a lot of these D23 officials say we do this for our fans. You know, you are the ones that matter and all that. I'm sorry. I love Disney, but you are full of bullshit because if you really cared about us as fans, you would then have the common decency to look at your freaking technological systems that you think that are going to go so damn smooth and you would test run the hell out of those things before you take it online. And if you did have someone that was completely ill-equipped and incompetent then to put the wrong damn date on those tickets, then you shut the whole damn system down, you freeze everything, and you reboot it, and you set it up for another ticket date. You do not keep us in the queue line sitting there waiting for us to get absolutely nothing. And you want to call us loyalists? Then you treat us like we're loyalists. Yeah, no, well said, George. Well said. It's not, it, there's no excuse for that. There's no excuse for that. You know, there's no excuse for, for, how, for how this is. And it's not, it's not a first time thing. That's the thing that's really frustrating. You know, maybe the circumstances and the details change from expo to expo, but for the most part, there's always some issue, whether it be IT, whether it be operations, they got to clean this up. Like you said, George, people are, you, you were want, you were going to buy five tickets five tickets that money on the table and you couldn't do it. You couldn't give them your money because of all this nonsense. And it's like, we had everything set up, you know, we, we were on the verge of, you know, well, you guys are locals, but um, me and, and Slimer, you know, we're cross country. So we were on the verge of getting our flights, you know? So if we would have booked those already ahead of the game thinking, okay, we're, we're going to get these tickets we had the hotel set up. Thank God I didn't already prepay for the hotels because that would have been a whole hassle and a half getting refunds for that. Luckily, I do uh, pay at property. But it's just like the fact that we had all this set up, we were going to do our OG uh, 55 meetup, which, by the way, folks, is we're still going to do. It's going to be a different time frame, but that is still going to go on. It's not going to be during the uh, the uh, the D23 event. Um, but... On top of that, and as as Mike mentioned uh, earlier, was normally they the sell date for D twenty three is usually one one year to the day of the first day of the event. So, right. for instance, this this year the first day is August 9th. Normally, tickets would go on sale August 9th of twenty twenty three is when everything would be opened to, to buy tickets for this event. They would announce ticket pricing several months prior to that. So you're looking at almost like a year and a half of prep. We didn't even have time to even prep to say how much these tickets were going to be worth, whether they were a good deal or not. 
they literally gave us a week to the day when the tickets went on sale, which is then five months, almost five months out from the actual event. Everything just seems so congested and rushed, but yet at the same time, we're being told, oh, we could, we, you know, it's going to be to the fans' benefits. There's going to be a lot more capacity. I don't see how the hell there's more capacity when I've been a D23 member for 15 years and never had a problem. Why now is, do I have a problem when you supposedly added more capacity? I don't well, get it. Well, also, too, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was telling George this, because, right, again, there's there were so many problems with this year's, like, fiasco that was going on. And I was telling George, because I, because when, when they said Honda Center, right, I was stoked because I've been to the Honda, I've been to the Honda Center now, like, about five times for, like, Doug games. And um, so I know how, I know how, like, the, how, how the, the stadium setup is, right? Now, when we were looking at, um, or when they said the Honda Center, I was like, cool, it's going to be a lot of capacity, right? But then when George showed me the map or like of the seating arrangement, I was like, why is it only half of the Honda Center? I was I was under the assumption that instead of the stage blocking off and like blocking off one half of the arena, it, they, the, the stage would be here and then everybody could fill a 360 degree. So arena. basically put the stage in the center. Exactly. So that's why I thought was good, that they were going to do because they were going to add a lot more capacity, a lot more people, which I think they should have done. Whether, you know, here's the, if the seats actually sold out that quickly or whatever on this time, okay. But then they still should have let everybody fill those seats around the entire arena, you know. Uh, but on top of that, again, I, I think those ticket those front row seat ticket prices are absolute joke and dizzy and d23 you guys should be absolutely be ashamed of yourself for doing that you guys are ripping people off of their money and yeah i know people are going to pay for it because they want to because uh, they want to sit close i get it but that is a rip off you are doing your fans dirty yeah it's a it's a complete injustice that you want to say whatever we do we do for our fans you know because d23 was created for us fans us geeked out nerdy disney fans that just want to have a community that we all can share and have something in common of our love of disney that was the the whole idea of d23 and a lot and it tying into a lot of history and nostalgia and future things to come that's what the backbone of d23 was and up to this point that's what i really thought it was after the that the hassle that it put me through on March 26th and even on March 27th, I, I honestly, I see D23 in a whole different manner. I don't see it as they are looking out for us fans because obviously it didn't for, for me, you know, and it, again, it's not to the fact of, it's not saying that, Oh, I didn't get what I want. So I'm throwing a hissy fit. It was to the fact of that. Nothing was done right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not even like you. It's not like you were in the system and the system was working and you just didn't get tickets. Because that's not what this is about. Because we understand it's Disney and there's a lot of people that are right. wanting to get into this thing. It's the fact that you were in there, you were already in there, and you were you were you were in, in there to pick tickets, and they wouldn't let you. So it's not like you know you waited and it just didn't work out. It's like you were there, mm -hmm. and the system. Was was at fault for for you not being able to, to to snatch tickets? So that's what you're trying to say, I think, right, George? Where it's Absolutely, like, yeah, like yeah, hey, look, you, you wait and you don't get it. That's a whole other ball game. It's a whole other conversation. But when you do the right thing and you wait, and then you're prompted to sit there and to buy the stuff, and because of IT issues and and maybe even human error, like you were saying, George, you're prevented from it. That's a whole other situation, and it's unexcusable. Go ahead, Eva. Well, and also, like what George pointed out earlier, is that if you know you have, let's say, okay, so let's say, for example, they took what I just said and actually filled up the entire damn stadium, right? If you know there's X amount of number of seats, why in your mind, why are you going to sell or have people queue up that who are in line exactly. with the actual seating themselves? That's, I was just going to bring that up. That was, I don't even understand why. they even, And they even admitted that at the media event. That one of the D23 team members or reps or whatever the hell you want to call them, I don't even know. And quite frankly, at this point, I don't even care. Um, that <laughs> that they said this could fit about double the capacity 
of what Hall D23 did in the Anaheim Convention Center, for which it was about 7,000 people that you could fit in the Hall D23. This was about almost double the size of the capacity, so they said it ranged between twelve to 14,000 people, which, again, if that's what doubles the capacity, fine. But when you have a virtual queue system that Disney is appointing random numbers and throwing us in the line completely wherever they choose without a first come first serve basis as a raffle system that can only fit between 12 to 14,000 people, but they're going to put 65,000 plus people in the queue. Let's do the math. How the hell does that work? They should yeah. cap it when the first 12 to 14,000 people make it in there, not as a raffle, but as a first come first serve, first come first serve basis. You shut the queue down. You don't leave 65,000 plus people sitting in a queue waiting on tickets that Disney knows that they'll never get, but they're not going to tell us that. You will you won't find out until you actually get through the queue, and it's like, oh, so sorry. We're all sold out. Thank you for waiting and trying. Maybe next time. It's not right. It's not right. Now, George, should we dip into some of these other content creators? What, what, which ones should we start off with first? Um, let's start off with uh, Tim Tracker because that was actually the first one I came across, and I thought it was kind of interesting. Now, um, now, uh, now, fortunately, they did get tickets, but I, I still found it fascinating that their exp they well, actually, it wasn't Tim. Tim had a different experience, but his friend actually expresses a lot of similarities of what was going on so this just isn't me this is going across all the d23 fan base and i i find some of these uh videos of them talking about it but this is the first one that i find so um yeah, yeah. let's let's get to well, it so, well, so, oh go ahead Evan. So, so, sorry just real, just real quick back on the Honda center thing because it's oh, fine shit whatever yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so so it so the arena it seats up to seventeen thousand one hundred and seventy four people if, wow. if you fill the entire thing up. So you, you tell the me they couldn't fill that up. So. One, two, three, four, five. So they left out about a little over 5,000 seats. Wow. It, it's based off of what Disney said of what they were going to fill the capacity to. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. All right, here we go. This is the Tracks Podcast, or That Tracks Podcast. Um, you can find them on YouTube. I highly suggest you subscribe, just like OG did. You can see right here, I'm subscribed. <laughs> and smash that like button, just like I did right here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so here we go. Let's, and, and how we always do it here on the channel, we'll, um, we'll go ahead and play it, stop it. You know, We're not going to play the whole thing with these videos because yeah. this one's an hour and 15 minutes, and there's a few of them here that are longer. We're going to play just a little bit of each one, you know? So yeah. here we go. Ridiculous resale prices of D23 tickets. <laughs> Which right is the real thing that the is really thing. happening. The, the one that I saw was for the floor seats, the most expensive. Remember how last week we talked about how there were $2,500, $2,600 yeah. for the floor seats, section 100? Yeah. On StubHub right now, one of those tickets is selling for $7,000. Wild. Also, I wanted to say, too, I noticed last week we talked about the rows on the floor. I think there's definitely more than 12 rows based on the sections that yeah. I'm seeing. I think those were section numbers, not row numbers. Right, which is interesting because how? Yeah, I don't know. So we can just jump right into that. We'll have to get into like high dad soup and stuff as well and just like an update on, on each other's lives. But again, there's not a whole lot personally that happened for me since I've seen you last and talked to all of you guys last um but so d23 was a big thing that happened this week tickets yeah. went on sale we talked about it last week they went on sale on tuesday at 3 p.m eastern time and we're uh, gonna put that in quotes because they didn't actually yeah. go on sale at that time <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it was a little bit a, of a disaster yeah disney has a track record a track record Oh, oh, that track of uh, <laughs> messing up on ticket sale days for big events like this. And I just don't, time. I don't get it. Like, I want them to do well with these things. Like, I want right. them to be a front runner when it comes to ticket sales, because it's like, you're one of the biggest companies in the world. Like, we should be able to do this. We should right. be able to have a seamless process. I don't know that this was technically... Obviously, everything boils down to it being a system error. And th this was never confirmed and it never will be confirmed. But the idea is that the wrong for sale date was inputted because, and this happened to me, once you finally got through the queue, uh, when you went to go select the type of pass that you were looking to buy, 
everything was saying that the tickets d- would go on sale August 7th. And Which so is the would... event of the date, the yeah, date the, of the event. Yeah, the, it's technically the day, the day before, two days before the event started. So right. that would not have made sense whatsoever, obviously. And so by the time that all of these people got through the queue... They were stuck on this screen trying to select a ticket, not being. And I was one of them. (laughs) And their countdowns. So you were you had a certain amount of time to purchase your tickets once you got through the queue. Their countdowns were expiring, and then they were getting sent back into the queue. I saw people say that that happened to them on like in rare form and rare. And you wouldn't know anything about that, George, would you? Uh, Yeah, maybe a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Occasion. Yeah. Well, that sounds terrible. (laughs) <laughs> awful some people were able to get to that Damn. main screen and stay on that main screen and then just refresh and it was resetting their timer so that they weren't timing out but i do think that there were some people and maybe they accidentally clicked the wrong button as opposed to refresh and it just sent them back um but it was it was interesting so so i i was ready to go i had a lot of devices set up ready to go um and it was basically luck of the draw because once you got into the queue uh, it auto put everybody into a spot at three o'clock. He's- okay, so he's kind of going over what we already did, but basically, but, yeah, yeah. But th- that just shows you, like, he, so they're kind of confirming what we just talked about, where this was a huge issue. You know, they were throwing you into this thing, and you couldn't click on anything. Like nope. you were there, ready to buy some, and you couldn't do a damn thing. It was a dead. It was a dead page. It was. It was dead. It was completely just all filled with air. So and literally did, and they didn't even even think to even give complimentary like emails to people that were already in there now they did tell people on the page that was still in the queue saying we're gonna we're gonna temporarily pause all sales well yeah the people that are in the queue can read that but the people who are in like mad rush to buy tickets that we weren't notified we didn't know what the hell was going on outside of the trying to pick our seats they should have sent us an email notification saying everything is on hold everyone just stay there we'll redirect you give us some like be a little bit like a jiminy cricket let your conscience be your guide here like let's you know you know hey george you know they're not making it easy bro (laughs) (laughs) making it easy so should we do the disney hall um so um Let's do um let's do Adam the Woo really quick because sure. now with his is while we were watching it he was actually in the process. This was at the time that he recorded this was March twenty seventh. This is the actual day two. He had no luck with day one, which I don't think I think majority of people didn't. Um, but he was successful in getting a ticket. But you'll see the trouble that he was in while he was in the midst of trying to get a ticket with this. Absolutely. Here we go. All right, back home now. Did not have the best luck yesterday being a D23 gold member for the Expo or the ultimate fan Disney fan event, they are calling it. So now I'm doubling down. I got the phone open. I'm also curious maybe if it would be quicker and better today. So yesterday was for gold members. That did not help me out at all. But today is for Visa card holder members, which I am a Visa card holder. So got it here on my computer and also on my phone and see if that helps. Now I've had the website minimized in the pre-line all morning and I am number 1,307, which is pretty dang good if you ask me. I only have 1,306 people in front of me. So I think my options are pretty good on the phone considerably different on the computer what the heck what a wild difference look at the computer my place in line on my laptop 44,530 people i have 44,529 people in front of me i think i'm gonna go with the phone (laughs) complete polar freaking opposites I mean, one is in the thousands and one is in the 44,000s. How? It must just be random. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Got my chase card in the wallet all ready to rock. <laughs> I, have, I have a good feeling about this. Uh-oh. Today might be my day. All right. Yet another massive problem. 
So my time in the queue was ready to go and it has me signing in. I have gone through this process five times. It's not letting me log in. I even <sighs> signed out of the laptop. It says your time is ready. Sign in. I try to log in and it boots me right back to this. What the heck, man? I even click cart there and nothing happens. It doesn't even go to show that the cart's empty. It's just the system is so failed. Yeah, I have uh, good. Yeah. Crazy. So, but, there you, but, yeah. but cool car, though. Cool car, though. Cool car. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that was Adam the Woo. And I will be linking all these content creators, obviously, in the description below. So make sure you show them love, so, you know, support. So we got, um, you know, uh, Tim Tracker, the, that tracks podcast. We got Adam the Woo. Who, who are we playing next, George? Um, so we could do the um, the the Disney holics. Now, the reason why I brought them up, because, of, of course, they had issues. Um, I wanted to kind of bring them up because they kind of stumbled upon a little hack that I didn't even think of doing this in the time because I was so freaking flustered. I don't even know if it would have worked, but I thought was kind of genius of how it actually could have worked out. And I just wanted to bring it up because I thought it'd be uh, kind of interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And I actually just found out about them through you. So I'm going to go ahead and smash that subscribe <laughs> button right now. And I'm going to smash that like button. And I suggest <laughs> everybody at home does the same thing. All right, here we go. Um, in total typical Disney D23 fashion, they fucked up at some point. So like people were getting in and it was saying that tickets weren't available to purchase until August 8th. Oh yeah. And it's like, Oh my God, they, did they not even test this thing? Like, what do you <laughs> mean? So, and then people in there only had like 15 minutes and then would kick them out. So I don't know what ended up happening with those people. Wow. Hopefully they didn't lose their spot. It's kind of crazy. Um, we did see that once they got it fixed, somebody purchased a ticket that was number 200 quite quickly so like hopefully everybody got their wait a minute to go back august in, but... 8th is the day before the expo starts that's crazy that they had that messed up that wrong yeah <laughs> yep and some people were saying august 9th some people are saying august 7th so i don't even know what was going on with that wow. mine said august 8th um i did have to hit refresh because even when i went in hours later when i finally got in um it still said that they weren't available and I just hit refresh because I had been reading what everybody's writing. So it's all this tips and stuff wow, flowing through stressful. the internet that if you're not following, you probably had a harder time than I did. And I had a hard time. So, Jeez. so wow. here's the catch. I thought like, all right, this is going to be really easy. We're going to get our four seats for the group of us. And we're always going to be in the same spot every night of this event. And it's just going to be easy. Right. However, when you realize that people can buy individual day tickets and or select their seats on their own, it then does not turn it into a smooth buying process. So by the time I made it in, and long before I even got in there, they had no more groups of seats together. They were all individual wow. seats because there are all these random one-seaters that people left a gap like you would do in the movie theater. Yeah. <laughs> Leave an empty one between you and the strangers. That's another thing and they should have tested because I've seen some theaters don't allow that now. Like Alamo, it won't let you. But like AMC, it will oh, let you. Really? Yeah, yeah. And I get irritated because I like I the wonder... space. <laughs> I know. Yeah. This one might have not let you. I luckily had like I was doing it. Like the only way I could do it was getting them all together. But um, with no spaces. But it did have a red exclamation point. And it says, please don't leave single seats. But I don't know if it would have let you move oh, forward without Yeah, please sounds more it. like a request than a. Yeah. Dialogue. I don't know if I didn't try it. So. <laughs> Um, but none, nonetheless, by the time I made it in, actually, by the time my friend who was also shopping for us made it in, um, there was already, that was like 45 minutes before I got in, there was already no groups of seats together, all individuals. So I was like, oh my God, what's going to happen? And then Courtney, shout out to Courtney, reached out to me because she was also in line to get tickets. Savior, Angel Courtney. She reached out to me and said, hey, quick hack. If you just buy individual day tickets, oh. they're the same price as a three day ticket and you could get, then there's lots of seats open. So See, that's interesting. Cause we were trying to get, we were trying to do the three day, which we didn't know. We didn't right. know. And it happens, bro. But it's like, this is, this is the issue. We're seeing issue. But why issue. should we have to even do that? Like, why should we even have to be looking for hacks to say, okay, well, now we got to stop and think and we got to brainstorm. Okay, this isn't going to work, but let's try B, C, and D. It's like, why can't we just go in, make a purchase, go to go into our cart, check out, pay for it, and be done with it? 
Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. The, and well, the problem too is that, sorry, OG. No, you're um, good. It's like that you're not going to want to sit there and buy individual tickets for five people. Like, right. That's not going to that's not going to happen because they're all going to probably get taken up, and they pretty much were. So that's just kind of like that'd be more of a pain in the butt to do. It's 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 crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Now our last creator, a uh, friend of the channel, actually Daps. We love Daps. Gotta love but, Daps. Yeah, but just make sure you give him his hat back, George. That's Absolutely. All. You'll you'll get this back, bro. Don't worry. <laughs> but we got Daps Magic here. Now this one is a long video. It's forty minutes. So w what's the plan on this one? We're, we're basically wanna... we're just gonna hear like the opening up to like this whole thing. So this actually was the media event for for the the hype for the D twenty three fan event um that they had i believe it was in glendale and uh this was before um <laughs> all this fiasco started this is them kind of like re giving out the information and i just thought that this was kind of interesting to kind of hear them say kind of all like the sweet talk to the fans because essentially everything that they were saying was basically not what was promised to us it was not delivered to them in a big red shiny bow yeah. So I thought it would be kind of interesting to kind of touch upon it. Yep, absolutely. Here we go. D23, this is what inspires us. Thank you to all the audience members, all the fans. We appreciate you. Avengers! <laughs> Assemble. Avatar the Way of Water. D23! If you're a Disney fan, this is the place to be. You fans are truly legendary. I'm so excited! D23. D23. The ultimate convention. This place has got everything. Wakanda forever! <laughs> this thing is uh, bananas. What's up, everybody? And you cannot believe the spectacular technological innovations. Inside out, too! <laughs> We need to give you some new news. You are the first audience to get a sneak peek. What we set out to do is not just tell a good story, but to have a lot of impact. Can't wait for this show! Taking the edge of technology is the formula for success, and we try to extend that legacy. I love you, Disney fans. The community is just full of wonderful people, and you just you feel at home. We've never seen anything like this. It is literally the ultimate Disney experience. You gotta go hard. Oh, sorry. There we go. Hold on one sec. Guys, off this thing. There we go. Sorry about that. I, I gotta pay for YouTube Premium. Thank you all so much for being here. My name is Asad Ayaz, and I have the tremendous pleasure of being uh, Chief Brand Officer, serving as the Chief Brand Officer uh, for the Walt Disney Company. Uh, as we just heard from Bob, D23 this August is going to be the ultimate fan event um, for the ultimate Disney fans. We at Disney really are lucky to have the most passionate and devoted fans in the world, who each and every day inspire the Disney creators and cast members behind the magic that you all know and love. From Pixar and Disney Parks to Marvel, ESPN, Star Wars, and beyond, our fans are truly a match. And we're immensely grateful for the deep sense of pride and ownership our fans feel for the stories and characters we bring to life across the worlds of Disney. D23, the ultimate Disney fan event, will give fans um, tens of thousands of our biggest fans an unbelievable experience this year. It'll be everything fans love about D23 on a totally new level. Today, you're going to hear about the expanded show floor that will feature the latest and greatest from Disney Wales and partners. And of course, the big on-stage entertainment moments and conversations with our top talent and creators. And this year, we thought, what better way to kick off the weekend's festivities than a D23 day at Disneyland? Okay, so this is interesting. He's talking about how this is what you're talking about, right, George? Mm -hmm. Where he's talking about, like, oh man, we appreciate the fans so much. You know, this, that, yeah, they're so loyal. We love you guys. And look, I get it. He's got to do his job. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, it's nothing on him. But it's but like but as we always say with even Universal, if you're gonna hype something up, right, you have to deliver. You got to deliver that promise of what you are stating. Right. So if you're gonna say it, you better do it.
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, and that's what's frustrating is like, you know, it's, look, it's good to hear they appreciate the fans. It's good to hear that. But you have to you have to back that up with some action, though, Disney. You know what I'm saying? This event has been plagued with issues go, going as far back, like we talked about earlier in the show, since 2011. You know, you appreciate the fans, good. So respect the fans enough to get your stuff together and make these events flow a little smoother. Uh, you know, you, you don't want to have... I don't know, man. It's like, I, it, there, this is a massive conglomerate. This is a global mega corp and it seems like they struggle every expo to get this right operationally with it whatever it is it's it's not a, there's no excuses man there's no excuses and i get it there's always there, there might be some problems here or there but right. the level of issues that we're seeing from from expo to expo is way too way too far beyond what what they should be doing they could and, do better and this actually kind of worries me in a sense because if if this was a catastrophe just by selling the tickets what is the operations going to be like actually at the yeah. event itself yeah well it's, because now you have the equation of two venues you have the honda center and you got the anaheim convention center now what are they going to are they going to bus people back and forth how's that how's that going to work are there going to be two hour lines to get onto these buses Mm -hmm. that's that's a lot of what the the media event was actually asking after everyone watching our video i definitely highly recommend especially if you are going to um the d um the the, the d23 event if you were lucky enough to get a ticket and didn't get screwed up the ass and not in the pleasurable way like i did but it's like i strongly <laughs> i strongly say that watch that video because it, it covers a lot of the the uh questions comments concerns opinions from the media event to the the d23 team members and actually transportation was one of the things that was brought up and now apparently they say oh we got this taken care of you know this is going to be this is great you know we got in partnership with transportation okay that's all well and good but at the same time while you're saying that you said that the ticket system was going to go smooth as pie I didn't see it. So what does that say about your your confidence in the transportation system? That you're going to have to shuttle 12,000 people back and forth. How long is the wait? As you said, OG. And I believe they said it. Now that's like a first come first serve basis. Right. So it's like, so could you actually be standing in a line not guaranteed to get on a bus? Honestly, bro, and, and this is just me, and people at home can do whatever they want to do. You know what I'm saying? If it's up to me, the, the, the distance between the convention center and the Honda center obviously is too far to walk. But if you were to Uber or Lyft that, it's not going to cost you that much, bro. Maybe 10 bucks, maybe. I, I mean, you know, it's ballpark. I'm not really sure ex the exact figure. Now, I will. Right. Over. Now, I will do that, too. And we talked about that. That's what we were going to do if we were going to go. But I also realized something. The Uber and Lyft company is going to know anybody during that time frame, that price is going to jack oh, up. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. That's a good they, point, dude. And with everybody getting a Lyft and an Uber, all those cars are going in the same direction. That's going to cause a lot of congestion on top of the regular traffic that's already in Anaheim as is. I don't know. I just think that's – I think they were trying to simplify by adding more capacity, which, again, I don't know how they did. Yeah. I think that they caused – and pardon my French. I'm sorry, Disney. I think you caused a major clusterfuck. I yeah. really do. And, again, it's it's just my opinion. This I, I hope not. And just like Tim Tracker's friend, I want Disney to succeed. I want them to do well. I want them to get it right because I wanted to be there. I wanted you guys to be there with me. And that was the major disappointment of it all because I am very – I don't just love Disney. I'm a very passionate person when it comes to Disney. So anytime that you see me get frustrated or – or like scrambled or hell I'll even say it even cursing it's because I'm a very passionate Italiano about the Walt Disney Company yeah. and I mean what I say and I say what I mean and I don't mince my words but I do think that D23 should also follow 
in that pursuit of not mincing their words because everything that they had promised thus far with D23, they have not delivered. Yeah, exactly. And, and Disney, just remember, you can do it. It's not impossible. 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 You can change the word impossible with just one thing. I'm possible. Crap! You all can become possible. In the word impossible, there's I'm possible. I'm Disney. You're possible. Exactly, Disney. You are possible. Nothing is impossible. You can fix the D23 Ultimate Fan Event. It's possible. Get out there and change the world, Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I do have to say, as much of my frustration and ranting on this video, and I know, folks out there, you're probably not used to it because we, you think of us as, you know, speaking highly of Disney all the time, which we, we were optimistic. We like to be and stay positive, seeing the glass half full. But as we always said, if the time comes where we have to be very critical of yeah. what's going on with Disney, we will, we will do it. And yeah. now here's the proof right yeah, in front of your is. eyes and i but i do have to say on a slightly positive note i as i said i was completely checked out of giving up my d23 membership i have made the decision i am going to keep it for a little while longer and give it another test run not necessarily with uh the d23 fan event but i also am a huge fan of destination d23 i have been to several of those um which they're really fun they're like a smaller version um, they're usually held at Walt Disney World, done in the Contemporary. Um, and then, of course, OG, you had mentioned the studio tours, which I've ha I've done um, several times. I've done several D23 movie screenings. Um, so I, I think, honestly, in the end, as much as I'm frustrated with D23, and that will always have like a little bit of a, a ding for me, I, again, I love Disney, and it's like I... I'm still trying to find a way to make it work. And I did speak to someone from D23 today. I did call. She was very sweet. Uh, shout out to Monica from D23. Ca um, hashtag cast, cast compliment. <laughs> cast compliment. And honestly, I do have to say, I think honestly, and, and no offense to Monica, I'm not saying this in the wrong way, but I think when you're a little bit lower on the ladder compared to being up, as a big wig suit and tie kind of person, I feel like you as a as a down to earth cast member, you see us fans as being eye to eye because you truly are the fans. I feel like honestly, the suit and ties, they couldn't give two shits, honestly. And they say that they're ultimate Disney fans as well. But what's funny is they need a teleprompter to say that. Oh. They can't say it without actually reading it from a screen. And honestly, that that bugs the ever loving shit out of me. That if you really truly are a Disney fan, say it with your heart that you mean it. Because honestly, it seems like you're only out there for the almighty dollar. So honestly, for someone like Monica, that she had to apologize to me how many times, and she said honestly, I didn't even, I wasn't able to even get it myself. Um, and that's and that's sad. That's very sad. She works for she works for the company. Where she's taking D twenty three calls, and she she didn't even get. That's that's ridiculous. I mean, they they should be comped in and be able to go. That's crazy. That's crazy, yeah. man. And and, it's like I used to work when I was a teenager. I used to work at a sandwich shop, right? Like we got free sandwiches and free sodas, like because we work there. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't like you know like shady. Like the like the owner like gave that to us because we work there. Like it's like expected, right? Like I think that if you work the D twenty three phone line, like you should be like automatic into this into this event. That's crazy that they're not. Yeah, it, it's wild. But I had a very nice conversation with her, and she, I believe every word that she said because as I was talking, I was hearing that keyboard clicking. She was typing all the notes of what I was saying, and she took my full name. She took my D twenty three member ID number. And she said, I will be passing this along. And she said, because to me, she said, your your feelings matter, your opinion matters. And she said, this should have not happened to you. And, and not only was she clicking away and typing it, but it was recorded for quality assurance. What you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> so it was all on tape, George. So you got it, bro. You got it. Absolutely. Now, but, but Ebba, before we go, I want to, Ebba, any, any, anything you want to add before we, we close it out today, Mr. Ebba? 
Um, yeah. How about the <laughs> fact that all this nonsense with Dizzy as a whole and their crappy, like, system software for Magic Key sales, Dizzy After Dark events, Oogie Boogie, why are all these, like, other ticket events so hard and hard and long, pun intended, to get into? <laughs> like, <laughs> giggity, you know, giggity, like... have a giggity, giggity. <laughs> All right, <laughs> but uh, so, so like, because I was telling George that at my other job sounds um, like my last Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, at my last job, my my uh, my coworker's girlfriend, right? She was trying to get Oogie Boogie tickets. She was in, in the queue for eight hours. Now tell me, why does it take eight hours of someone's day to get in a queue or to go from a queue to buy tickets for something? It shouldn't take. Do you spend forty minutes buying tickets? No, it shouldn't take that long. I know there's a lot of people getting in, but it should not take for any of this that amount of long time to get into. I'm, uh, I'm yeah. honestly, honestly, Mike, I'm now convinced that Disney is like the Truman Show, where they're like they just have like a bunch of TV screens and they're just watching us. Like, look at these fools sitting in this eight-hour line. It's like, isn't that crazy? Like, it's it's that's how it, it truly feels like. Because you're right. Does it really take that long? Even if you have thousands of people on at the same time it does it really take that long to purchase tickets normally for me i'd say five minutes yeah if right. even yeah because because most people who are buying these tickets are disney fans like us and they already know what they want yeah. you know so they go on buy your ticket get out why does it take like five six seven eight hours to for if, if it's working properly <laughs> to get in and go buy our tickets like this whole system across disney like an entire company sucks and they need to fix it that shameful 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 disney <laughs> well said well said gentlemen it was an absolute honor today talking at d23 the ultimate fan experience <laughs> it was a, it was the ultimate experience that's for sure that's for sure and but, I, um... I i tell you really quick i and and for everyone out there watching this i was <laughs> I told OG, I told Mike, I was like, I don't want anywhere near Anaheim on the weekend. I am done. I don't want to see a flag. I don't want to see a poster. I don't want to see a sign. I don't want to see nothing. I was like so done. But as I said before, before we close it out, we are still going to do our very first ever OG 55 meetup. We yes. are going to do that at a, a separate time, separate date, around the same time. But once we can figure that out, as I said, it won't be a Ron D23, but I think it would be better in that sense with all, without the hassle and, and the, the chaos right? and everything. So yeah. I think it'll be better, but we are definitely still promising that to you guys. And also on August 10th, if everything goes well, um, as if Disney keeps their word on that as well, they did say that they will be live streaming those big events. Now, I don't know if they're going to do the, the film. They usually don't. They may do the legend ceremony, but I could almost guarantee that when they said that they were talking about the parks panel, cause they did it the last time. Right. And also with destination D 23. So, so we will be doing a, um, a watch party. Yeah. A watch, yeah. Party. A watch party. But again, there's a big asterisk because hopefully hopefully they 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 live stream the park panel. exactly yeah so yeah, yeah. now i think i honestly have to come into the realization <laughs> that anytime disney really says that it's going to happen uh, yeah we got to put some asterisks on that and it's a, like yeah. an if or a or a maybe oh yeah exactly an if or a maybe because i'm death girl that drive you crazy but you're killing me alone got to think you maybe alone got to think you maybe alone to think maybe. There we go. There we go. But, One more but, shout out for maybe. Go ahead. Yes. But in the end, Disney, I still love you. I'm still passionate about the company. I'll always respect you. I'll always you know, I, I, I am the almost one of the number one contenders for you. And yeah. that'll never change. But even though that won't change for me, there's a lot of things as a company that you have to change. And here, yeah, that's great, George, but I just got a call from Bob and your special access has been revoked and brunch on Sunday, cancel, bro. Cancel. cancel. Damn, cancel. man. Come on, Bob. See, dude, you could have had you could have had brunch in at Jeffrey's in Malibu and you had it you had a complaint about D23, right? Remember, George? remember remind me next time to get the brunch first before I go on a rant. <laughs> Come on, dude. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I I'm still going, though. Um, so I'll, 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 
I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, oh, Gio, oh, here's the thing, If that's the case, on my next yacht trip with Bob Iger, I'm going to tell him to revoke your special access. Oh, <laughs> dude, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Gentlemen, it was an absolute honor and pl a pleasure um, talking shop with you, with you guys. Eb, I'll start with you, our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. If you can let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media, sir. Absolutely. You can find me on Instagram, Michael Ebba, Twitter, at Michael Ebba 1991 and you can find me on, on here on OG55, where I periodically make an appearance and talk nerd with these oh. two gentlemen. Yes, 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 yes. And right over here, we got the one, the only, the Italiano in Mr. Dapp's fedora. George, if you can let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media. Absolutely. If I have any social media platforms after this video is released, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And of course, you'll find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes really sticky Disney news and info. Sticky, icky. Thank you all for watching this episode of OG 55. And until the next episode, have a wonderful, wonderful day. 세상이 누구에게나 공평하게 추악해